Hey, welcome back to Prepping with Sarge. So today we're gonna to talk about oregano, what to do with all that surplus oregano that you have. I've talked about oregano in the past. If you're a gardener, you already know that it is one of the best herbs to grow in the garden. Uh, it just makes everything taste better. But if you're a prepper, a survivalist, or a homesteader, what you really need to consider is that this is one of my must-grow crops. Oregano is one of the most medicinal crops you can grow in your garden. It is antibacterial, antiviral, and if it ever got into a situation where the economy was so bad and you were the food shortage situation was so bad the supply chains were disrupted and you started having to eat squirrels and snakes uh, oregano makes pretty much everything taste better i think you're going to enjoy this one if once you start growing it you are going to have a surplus and you're going to be wondering what to do with it i'm going to show you what to do with it today stay with me now This oregano patch here is several years old, and as you can see, it is a monster. It has kind of grown out of control. Uh, generally, I tell people when you're when you're harvesting a plant, try not to take a, more than a third of the plant at a time. This thing is so old and so well established that we could probably take, uh, you know, I'm going to say 40%, and we'll be okay. So what I want to do here is it's actually creeping more and more towards my rosemary and I didn't want that to happen. This is an area where I'm trying to develop and cultivate some new strawberries. So uh, I'm gonna try and start from here and pull it back a little bit. But what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you get your garden shears or whatever you're gonna use to harvest and you're gonna start, you make sure you clean them and sharpen them. Uh, it's just gonna make clean cuts, make it easier for the plant to heal. And we're just gonna start cutting back from here and I'm gonna work my way, you know, until I feel like I have enough harvesting and then I'm going to put it on my forage bandana which I'm going to show you what to do after that. When you think you've foraged enough, go ahead and gather it all together. All right, now obviously I could have used the netting, but being that these were kind of small and vine-like, I figured it was gonna be more trouble to get it out of there than not. But uh, once you've gathered it all together, then you're gonna give it a good rinse under the hose and let it sun dry if you, if you have the room to do that. All right, so a couple things here. Let's, uh, this, is the, this is the plant after I trimmed it back a little bit. And as you can see, I didn't do any harm to it. There's plenty more. In fact, I could probably take twice as much as I did, and I think the plant would still be okay. Shout out to Pine Tree Garden Seeds, who uh, this this these seeds that came from um, Pine Tree Garden Seeds. I think it was Italian oregano was the variety, uh, but this plant is several years old, has done phenomenal. Uh, if you go over to Pine Tree Garden Seeds, go ahead and use my discount code. It's uh, SARGE10, all capital letters, and that will get you 10% off any order of $20 or more. All right, so let's go over here. I'll show you what I did. So after you rinse them and let them air dry a little bit, the next step is you have some choice in the next step. These are dehydrating trays. Now I'm going to take you inside and I'm going to show you how I do this with uh, my dehydrator that I recommend and I'll give you a link. Of course, if you use my link, it helps me out because I'll get a little tiny commission off of Amazon. But um, you don't have to do it this way. You can also dry them between paper towels in a sunny window. You can hang, you can bundle this up and hang it in a sunny window. Uh, you can, if you're, if you're not in a humid climate, you can hang it outdoors, either in the sun or in a shady area. If it's not too humid, they will dry that way. You can build a solar dehydrator. Uh, my friend Morgan from Rogue Preparedness has some tutorial videos on how to do that which, you know, if you're a prepper or a homesteader and you're thinking about power outage situations, maybe that's the way you want to go. 
the simplest and easiest way for me and given the fact that I do have electricity today I'm going to show you how to do this with my dehydrator which I do highly recommend so uh, basically all I, all I did was I spread this on the trays and you want to give a little bit of breathing room in between the vines okay so just make sure that there's some airflow because these are going to stack up I'll show you how that works inside but these are going to stack up on top of each other and air needs to be able to come up from the bottom all the way down from the top to the bottom and the bottom back up to the top. That's how it dehydrates. All right, folks, the next step is beyond easy if you've got one of these. And again, this is the brand that I recommend. I've been using this for over 10 years, has not failed. And uh, believe me, it gets quite the workout in our household. So all you're gonna do is stack up your trays. Again, make sure you've already cleaned this. Just gets all the ants and dirt and that kind of stuff off. Let it dry in the sun a little bit. And then you're going to stack them up in a way so that the airflow can go uh, from the top to bottom and back. That's how it dehydrates. Now I will say one little thing about this is you will find, it'll come with a booklet that tells you like recommended temperatures and times. It's a guideline folks. It's really depends on uh, your elevation and your humidity, how long it takes. So what you're gonna do, I do recommend that you go to a lower temperature because you wanna preserve the nice oils, the medicinal oils in that oregano and the flavors that come with those oils uh, and to do that, you want to basically, you want to dry it slower. If you dry it faster, you actually are burning off some of those oils. Okay. I hope that makes sense. You can increase the temperature later on if it's taking too long, but for the, at least the first six hours going a very low, like I'm going to say somewhere between 90 and 125 at max. So that would be over here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. And then uh, how long will it take? Well, that really does depend on your humidity and elevation. So what I do is I will come back in here every 12 hours or so, so morning and night. And what I'm looking for is it's gonna be nice and crispy to the touch. I'll show you what that looks like once I get there. All right, now final step here is, uh, you're gonna have to check this because again, it's gonna depend on your area. It's gonna depend on your humidity. It's gonna depend on your elevation. But what you're looking for here, the crispiness of this, okay? I wanna show you what I'm talking about. The, it, it should break, like, a, like it should make a snap as, it, as you break it, okay? And the leaves should be like basically crumbling to the touch, okay? That's what you're looking for. Now, what I'm going to do is you can, you can store it with the stems and then you're just going to have to peel it off later on when you're using it. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing, but I'm just basically going to strip off like that okay so I'm, all I want is the leaf material this stem material you can uh, just compost it or, or whatever you want to do with it but um, what I want what I'm using is just this this leaf material and it's that easy basically you're just gonna run your run your hand down it and you strip it okay so I'm gonna fill this all up and I know that says parsley I need to replace the label that's from uh, a couple of years ago uh, we're going to fill this up with oregano and then it's going to, we're going to store this in a cool, well, actually it doesn't even have to be cool. Room temperature, dry, dark place is going to give it the longest length. If you've got it out on your counter and the sunlight's hitting it, it's not going to go bad tonight or tomorrow. It's just going to, it's going to, the oils will deteriorate a little bit faster. Flavors will deteriorate, but it should last well over a year in an airtight jar like this. Uh, it's basically stored at room temperature and, and if you store it away from the light, it'll give you a little bit longer than that. All right, folks, that filled up that jar and a little bit left over, which I'm going to give to my friend. That is how you store oregano long term. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider giving it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Keep planting your seeds, keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge.